forces of Africa, uh, which are very important uh, to Western economies. So uh, some point is actually uh, as, uh, of the viewpoint of that if uh, and uh, of course, uh, before actually highlighting the viewpoint of this uh, pundit, let's even capitalize on uh, a statement which uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, said in his excerpt, which we listened uh, uh, earlier on about the fact that the era, we should move from that era where some people or some countries will count most of their wealth and assets uh, just on the availability of raw materials that they get from the African soil. And of course, we want to look at how uh, if, uh, we can change uh, the uh, uh, Western hegemony, because when you look at it critically, and uh, the amount of raw materials that leave Africa uh, to Western countries, uh, it still brings us back to how we can uh, they be conquer the Western hegemony, especially in their financial aspect as well, to be able to give uh, the African continent or African leaders uh, 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 upper hand and upper hand in uh, the negotiation of, especially economic, uh, economic uh, terms or economic uh, projects uh, between Africa and other countries. Uh, I remember one uh, analyst who highlighted uh, it was on African Media TV. Uh, that so long as Africa doesn't have the economic priorities, it will be difficult for Africa uh, or Africa's voice to be heard, especially at the international level. Given that Africa has everything that it, it takes for a nation or a continent to evolve economically, what do you think from a geopolitical perspective, uh, what do you think uh, African uh, can do, especially in terms of their foreign policies, not only with African countries, but especially with countries uh, uh, across the globe? <sighs> I think all of this depends only about the questions of unity. Unity. Africa needs its unity. Uh, and I see the problems now also um, about also the languages. You have, have friends from Africa. I couldn't uh, speak with them in English. We must use Russian language because they have studied in Russia and <laughs> because they are only speaking French when they are from Congo. So we have um, the problems of the different ethnics and the, the languages and the different cultures in Africa. And so it's a very, very difficult situation to uh, go on this stage of the global world as one block. It's not, it's not possible now for Africa. And so I couldn't answer you uh, on your question because I think um, we have different aspects, um, but the first aspect I like to say it's the security and the network. The security for Africa, the African countries, the sovereignty, and also an international network of people. They are working really in their heart for their countries. So diplomats, also businessmen, but when they are patriots and when they are for their people, they can make great things for the people in their uh, in the countries. I think so. Africa needs this spirit that the people on the top or in the level before the top, so the semi top level, they must be patriots. They must be people working for the interests of the countries. And this not happens now because many of them only bite by the West, working for the Western interests. And so on. This is the first thing that must, must be realized to, to have this spirit for Africa, to the people working for the people of Africa, not for the interests of other countries. This is very important. Yes? And this is the first step. And what's developing after this? Now I couldn't uh, <laughs> say because I'm, I'm uh, very realistic about the problems. And I don't like to make prognosis about the future because everything depends on different topics. First, the security. Second, the network, the international network. Third, 
I think, uh, to grow up societies in Africa that the people work for the interests of the people of, from Africa.